Welcome back friends. Welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this video lecture, we'll be talking about HPLC or High Performance Liquid Chromatography. It's also known as a liquid, it's a variant of liquid chromatography. We've talked about the gas chromatography and I told you like when you are reading any kind of chromatography lectures and videos, you need to understand three important mechanisms about that. First is what are the mobile and stationary phase in that chromatography. Because these are the two phases that will interact with each other and the interaction between mobile and stationary phase will ultimately allow to separate compounds from each other. Second is what are the characteristics based on which the separation is conducted. And third is the mechanism by which the separation is conducted. So if you know these three things, you know the idea about the chromatography. In HPLC or high performance liquid chromatography, this is a type of liquid chromatography. So the carrier that actually brings all those sample molecules with each other or inside it is known as liquid. This is the liquid phase of molecule that act as a carrier. In case of gas chromatography, the carrier is gas, for example, helium, hydrogen or nitrogen. But in liquid chromatography, the carrier would be liquid. And mobile phase represents to mostly the phase that the carrier present in. So the mobile phase for HPLC is also liquid because liquid is carrying all the dissolved substances that we want to separate from each other. So in this case, one thing very, very important that is required for the chemical compounds that we want to separate should dissolve in that liquid. Now there are, if we talk about the dissolve uh, of the different chemical factors, there are two important th things that we need to think about. One is the organic solvent and the aqueous solvent. Aqueous solvent are those which are hydrophilic, where all those aqueous and inorganic molecules solubilized. On the other hand, in the, in the organic solvent, all the other organic molecules generally survive, like, uh, like they are mostly tend to like hydrophobic in nature. So these two things are very important in perspective of HPLC. So the second question is what characteristics uh, that we use to separate? The answer is solubility and among that polarity of that compound. Polarity means it could be either, could be either polar or it could be hydrophobic. These two characters are the judgmental characters uh, that helps them to separate the chemical compounds using the interaction between mobile and stationary phase. Now the second thing is what is the stationary phase? Whether it's liquid or gas what? The stationary phase that we use in case of HPLC, it could be either solid or liquid. So it could be solid, example of some solid stationary phase in HPLC is silica and it also could be liquid. Okay. Now the third thing is the mechanism with which we separate that we are going to see in, in a moment later. The, the mechanism mostly will be based on separating the polar molecules from the non-polar molecules. Polar molecules from the hydrophobic molecules. Once we separate that, we can easily separate the chemical compounds from each other. Now let's look at the instrumentation process a little bit and then we'll go to the exact detail of the separation mechanism that is conducted in the column. So this is the complete picture where it starts with the mobile phase and ultimately ends in the detector while the detector is connected to a computer and while the computer has attached to the monitor and computer uses the data from the detector and put it in the graph that is going to give us an idea about what is separating and not. Now it starts with this mobile phase and the mobile phase in this case is a liquid phase that carries a carrier right. So normally if I simply modify this, this was earlier I draw for uh, in case of gas chromatography. So I need to modify it a little bit. In this case the mobile phase is nothing but simply dip, uh, it's a solution. So let me draw a chamber that contains a solution. So this is the solution chamber, a liquid solution present here. Okay, like that. It's a solution chamber that I draw, okay. And this is the tube which is connected 
to the chamber okay this is the carrier that is present this is the solvent which will ultimately carry all the sample with each other through the tube now normally it's placed in a in a chamber or the outside chamber now now normally the molecules of the, this either it could be aqueous solution so it could be like any organic sol solvent whatever it is it cannot flow directly inside the tube we need some sort of pump that will derive this solvent from this chamber to the tube so we need to place a pump here at the middle so there is a pump okay pump is present at the middle which will help in this flow uh, start to flow from this chamber to the tube and right after the pump we have a sample chamber where we inject the sample now the question is what kind of sample we can use for hplc we mostly use biological samples in gas chromatography it is not that good to separate biological samples because we heat the sample and make them volatile make them vapors but in case of HPLC, we are not heating them. What we are doing here, we are simply allowing the sample to properly interact to the carrier, dissolve in the carrier, and then carrier will carry that sample through the stationary phase and ultimately it will reach the detector. So in this case, we can use proteins to separate, lipids to separate, and any other organic and cellular molecules and biological molecules to separate from each other as a sample. So we can take a protein mixture as a sample, and then we inject there in the sample chamber now let's say here you can see the three different samples with three different colors black red and green that are mixed here and it's mixed with the carrier and now it will interact with the stationary phase now here comes the most important point about the hplc process is the interaction between the mobile phase and stationary phase now there are two types of scenarios that can result i'll be drawing two scenarios here on one in top one in but bottom to make you understand about the whole process let's say here it is the the stationary phase this is another stationary phase the stationary phase can be of two different type polar or hydrophobic now let's say in this top one it has a polar stationary phase for example it contains silica beads present in a stacked fashion in this column it is silica beads and silica beads are making the stationary phase which is hydrophilic now in this one let's say here it is made with hydrophobic molecules hydrophobic stationary phase this is hydrophilic stationary phase now what will happen in both this case is that two separate instruments we are looking at the same time and we are flowing the sample along with the carrier now remember one thing i told you that the mechanism of separation here is due to the nature of that sample whether it's polar or non-polar now if the sample is polar and the stationary phase is also polar in that case there will be better interaction with polar molecules with each other because they are hydrophilic they tends to interact with each other or if both of them are hydrophobic that will also make them to interact with each other so the movement of those samples if they have same type of feature like the stationary phase tends to slow in the movement right so if polar with polar slow movement hydrophobic with hydrophobic slow movement now if the sample is hydrophobic but the phase or stationary phase is polar then there will be high and fast movement because hydrophobic molecules will not interact with the polar stationary phase or the polar molecules will not interact with the hydrophobic stationary phase so now if we look at here in this case we have this hydrophilic or polar molecules in in, the, in present and we have hydrophobic molecules to separate let's say here we have hydrophobic molecules to separate so hydrophobic molecules together will start moving as hydrophobic molecules will not interact with this hydrophilic beads so they will start to move fast now let's say in this hydrophobic molecule list we have a red let's take only two we have a red and we have a black 
these are the two molecules that are separated now this black is more hydrophobic red is less hydrophobic so as black is very highly hydrophobic black molecules will move very very fast because they will not at all interact with this hydrophilic beads while red which is a little hydrophilicity in this red they will try to interact and attach to these hydrophilic beads so the movement of the red will be little slow compared to the black so at the end when they hit the detector as we know the black will travel fast so first the detector will receive signal from this black then it will receive the sing signal from the red and that can be easily depicted in the graph so in the graph what we will see is that first there is a black then there is a red there are two things we can see in this signal that i am be explaining in a moment now let's say here in this case where you have a hydrophobic stationary phase and hydrophilic molecules hydrophilic molecules to be separated but the stationary phase is hydrophobic so those hydrophilic molecules will not try to interact with hydrophobic stationary phase so among them some may be have a little hydrophobicity they will go a little slow compared to the rest of the hydrophilic molecules so those again with the same type of feature for example in this case let's take another one let's take again the red and let's take again the black let's say here the black is very hydrophilic very very hydrophilic very hydrophilic and red is less hydrophilic so as black is very hydrophilic this is no way it's going to interact with the hydrophobic stationary phase so it will reach fast while red is having a little though red is also hydrophilic but they have a less hydrophilicity so have a little hydrophobicity as well with the help of that it will come later so the red will reach last as is there is only two molecules uh, first will be black last will be red so again we are going to see uh, first black hits the detector so we'll give a peak of black then we'll red hit the detector later we'll see the peak of the red letter and that can also be shown and plotted in the graph like that when in the x axis we have time in the y axis we have the strength of the signal or the abundance of that molecule that is present or the concentration of that molecule now the more the height of the peak that means the more concentration of that compound present in that mixture okay not only the height but also the area it is making if we just calculate this whole area it's going to give us an idea about the concentration it's exactly proportional to the concentration of the compounds in the sample okay that is the idea about hplc high performance liquid chromatography now why we call high performance or sometimes you also call high pressure liquid chromatography because in this case we use a pump to to finally provide this carrier in very high pressure through this column through this tube it's just like small tubes through which high pressure is built because the uh, the diameter of this column the diameter of this tube is very small so they'll be they'll be forcing with this pressure and finally it will reach the detector and detector gets the idea about the concentration of each of these compounds that are present in the mixture that in a sense is hplc it's a variation of liquid chromatography now remember we we talked about two different situations one where we have hydrophilic stationary phase hydrophobic molecules this is known as a normal hplc traditional hplc let me write this is known as a traditional hplc while this one we have a hydrophobic stationary phase and hydrophilic molecules this is known as reverse phase hplc or rp hplc technique okay and rp hplc is more important and much required because with the help of rp hplc we can almost use uh, this technique to separate 70 to 80 percent of the all the analytes that we use in any other chromatographic techniques so it's a very versatile method of separating so many varieties of chemical compounds from each other we can use it for the separation of biological specimens and samples from each other and it's been very beneficial for the the molecular diagnostics uh, as well as understanding the disease and stuff so, so it's very so much important for all these different layers of this 
HPLC process. Now, as I told you, the process relies on mobile and stationary phase. Mobile phase, liquid, stationary phase can be solid or liquid. In this case, we saw the stationary phase is a solid. So, if the stationary phase is solid and the mobile phase is liquid, sometimes it's called a traditional, it's normally called traditional HPLC. But whenever we have a liquid stationary phase and liquid mobile phase, both of them are mobile phases, are liquid, mobile as well as stationary. In that case, we we the, those things are known as liquid liquid chromatography and this is a little uh, little modifications of the normal hplc so that is another variety of the chromatography so that in a sense of hplc and how hplc is operated how hplc is used this is really sensitive uh, though it's a little costlier in some cases but still if you run multiple samples together it could be beneficial though you require technicians to handle that and some expertise to obtain the results properly but still hplc is a very sensitive as well as it's very fa uh, fast as well as well as it's a very important techniques as far the biological science goes so that's why it's a very important one so if you like this video please hit the like button subscribe to my channel to get more biophysics video videos lectures like that as well as subscribe and share this video with your friends thank you